The three principles on how to be a good wife. You have five seconds to answer. Quick. Too late. Time's up. You're too slow. What a slow woman. You're not taking a nap, are you? I'm up. A wife of something or other, right? I've told you thirty times. You must have a hole in your head. I'm sorry. Next time, write it down and pin it on the wall. Memorize it until you can say it perfectly in five seconds. What? A wife is not to disobey her mother-in-law and husband. Wives are to respect their mother-in-laws and husbands and not make them do any housework. A wife must give birth to a boy. Oh, it was something like that, wasn't it? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with it at all, so I couldn't remember it. We're a prestigious family. You can't compare us with those ordinary working-class families. In a prestigious family, this kind of role is normal. You're taking advantage of the fact that we live separately, and you're the second son's wife, and you don't even try to get close to me and take me for granted. That's not true. Caden and I were just talking about going home for Thanksgiving. Since you married into my family. I expect you to follow the three principles of marriage. It doesn't matter if we live separately or if you are the second son's wife. We may be able to cover the third principle. You finally did it? Yes, ma'am. Of course. It's a boy, right? We don't know yet. What? After making me wait for a year? Make sure to tell me when you find out the sex. There's something more important than the sex. Actually, there were two babies in the ultrasound. Huh? Isn't that amazing? Caden and I were surprised too. I was talking with Caden about how hard it will be for us to have twins for the first birth, but we're gonna give it a go. I don't care if it's hard for you or not. I'm sure one of them will be a boy. But I told you, we don't know yet. What will you do if you have a girl? I don't know. Are any of your friends having trouble? What? You know, like someone having trouble getting a visit from the Stark. I have one friend. The treatment seems to be very expensive, and it appears to be quite challenging. What about it? Nothing. I'm just saying that it would be nice if you could help people like that. If they're in need, they would even be happy with girls. It would be nice if we could help someone with girls we don't need. What a thing to say! It's your job to produce an heir. If a dignified family line dies out because of you, will you take responsibility? My brother-in-law has two sons. Caden is the second son, so there is no need for an heir, is there? Yesterday, my eldest son left our home with his family. What? Really? My husband passed away, and my eldest son ran away. So. My second son, Caden, has no choice but to become the head of the family. I don't want it to be the second son, but I have no choice. Why did they leave? I don't know. They couldn't just have left so suddenly. That's how it is. Come back and give me an heir. I'll make sure I educate him so that he'll be fit to be the next patriarch. It's too sudden. Caden has his own work to do. We can't live in your house. He will quit his job and come here. There's an opening at the village hall. I'll ask them for you. Caden finds his current job very rewarding. He's been entrusted with important work, and he's working overtime all the time. It can't be helped. Things have changed. This is an important family matter. I don't need to ask you which is more important, work or family. You can't just suddenly say that. What a cocky thing for a wife to say. I don't care if you're pregnant or what, but there's a lot of work to be done here. I won't be of any help. That's right. You can have the baby here. You can do the housework right after the baby is born. My mother is going to come and help me after the baby is born. What are you talking about? You've married into my family. You have to be prepared to cut all ties with them. I can't do that. You've been sitting on your hands just because you're the second son's wife. Think about what's more important. 
our family with its prestigious history or your ordinary working class family. What is it with you? You keep talking back to me like I'm the wife. I'm going to educate you thoroughly, so be prepared. I found someone. Who? Someone waiting for the stork. Huh? It'll be too late to start looking for someone after they're born. We have to prepare for this kind of thing as early as possible. Now, I don't have to worry if the babies are girls. Please, don't talk like that. There's no need to think so much. If they're boys, we'll just raise them ourselves. If they're not, we can give them to someone who wants them. It's not that complicated. Are you serious? Yes, I am. There is a couple in my neighborhood who got married after the age of 45. They've given up on trying to conceive, but they're very grateful for the opportunity. So, they're asking for them. Tiffany, this is going too far. Why do you say that? Don't meddle. Boys or girls, we're going to raise them ourselves. We won't give them to another family. Please tell them that we aren't giving them up. What are you talking about? Girls go off to get married at some point. There won't be anyone left. You scare me. Because I'm too smart for you? I'm afraid of you as a person. If they're girls, give them to someone else. You can't talk about children as if they're property. What are you talking about? If there were things, you just throw them away. But because they're babies, you would give them to someone, right? But anyway... You're not coming here yet? I told you we couldn't go there, didn't I? I want you to come as soon as possible. Did you get the package I sent? It arrived. What the hell is that good luck charm for? It's not a power stone for childbirth, is it? I went to a fortune teller for a reading and got the stone. It attracts boys, not unwanted girls. It's not a good omen. This is just too much. That fortune teller sells really good stones. I'm looking forward to it. Have you talked to Caden, Tiffany? I did. He insists that he can't come because he has to work. I don't have a choice. You're the only one who can come. What the? My eldest son's stupid wife is gone, so I have to do everything. My back hurts too. I'm not kidding. Caden has no choice, so you come alone and do the housework. Okay? Not okay. I'm not even in the stable period yet. Pregnant women these days overreact. You know, in the old days, whether it was early pregnancy or postpartum, you couldn't take a day off. Caden told me to take it easy as well. I'm sorry. I don't think I can comply with your requests. Huh? It's not, I don't think I can comply. It's, I'm going to comply. I'm telling you to come. You're supposed to come running no matter what. There are two babies, so I'm being cautious because of the risks of pregnancy and childbirth. If it takes that much to stop you, you don't deserve our grandchildren. It can't be helped. Just try again next time. Tiffany, don't you think you are being too insensitive? It's a life that was finally given to us. Stuff like, give it to someone, or it can't be helped. I can't believe you can say things like that. I'm the one who can't believe you. Your lack of common sense really surprises me. It's really pathetic that I have to have my heir born from a woman like you. You say such horrible things. I can't live with someone like that. Hmm? Wait a minute. You seem to have forgotten your position. I'm your mother-in-law. You're the wife. Remember the three principles. I didn't write them down, and I have no intention of remembering them. Even you are against me. I'm just saying it's because I think it's crazy. It's like you're really outdated or something. I've told you many times, we are a prestigious family. We're not outdated. We're traditional. If you don't like it, then leave my son. There's a girl here who's a childhood friend of Caden's. I'll have him marry her. Are you ignoring Caden's feelings? 
It's his fault for ignoring my advice and marrying a woman like you. Were you born in the 1800s? The 60s. You are extremely out of touch with the times. I thought maybe... What a wife you are! Making fun of your mother-in-law? Your parents must have raised you very badly. If it were only about me, but to say terrible things about my unborn children and even about my parents. I'm pretty angry with you. But if you say any more, I don't know. It doesn't bother me even one ounce that you're angry. You're just a poor girl from a middle-class family, so back off. I see. Well, I'll give you at least one ounce soon. Ah, uh, you smart ass. I'll definitely make you break up. Sorry to keep you waiting. What's up? I thought I'd give you that ounce I was talking about before. I talked to my brother-in-law and his wife. What? I thought there must be something behind that mild-mannered brother-in-law's leaving. Of course, it's your fault. I think anyone would say it was the right thing for them to leave. Do you believe that traitor? Who's the traitor? I don't know what you're talking about. I heard my father-in-law left you very little in the way of assets other than his house and forest. That's right. So what? You were expecting it, weren't you? A lot of money. Not really. So you sold the whole mountain? You sold it without consulting my brother-in-law. That's why he got angry and left. Do you think I could do without my inheritance after serving my family so well? I thought I was going to leave the house to my eldest son and his wife and travel all the time. In the end, I didn't end up with much money, and my eldest son and his wife betrayed me. What a mess. My brother-in-law said he had fond memories of picking berries and wild vegetables on that mountain when he was a child. What's the use of having a mountain? I don't understand why he was upset when I was just sorting out what he didn't use. Your husband's will said not to sell it, and you ignored it. That's what your son is mad about. Huh. My son is so bitchy. Caden is nice to me. I'm sure he'll forgive me and come back. He won't go back. Why not? I would never have thought my mother-in-law would have an affair with another man and get pregnant. And then raise the child as their second son with my father-in-law. It's so appalling. And it's almost refreshing, isn't it? How did you know that? Did you think your husband didn't know that Caden had a different father? Huh? You mean my husband knew? Yes, even so, he pretended he didn't know and raised them as brothers without separating them. Your husband was wonderful. He raised Caden while keeping his anger toward you hidden in the back of his mind so that your children would not know the truth. I couldn't help it. I had my own circumstances. Back then, my mother-in-law was badgering me, and the stress was so bad. But that didn't stop you from cheating on your husband in the countryside, where rumors spread in three minutes. You have a lot of guts, don't you? That's my mother-in-law. I doubt your sanity. How did the kids find out about it? Your husband wrote a letter to my brother-in-law at the end. He told him to take it to his grave. Then, why didn't he take it to the grave? That's why I say he's a traitor. He decided it would be better for Caden if he cut ties with you. Oh no! Don't tell Caden! He already knows. Why did he tell him? He says it wouldn't make any difference. There is no substitute for the fact that his father took good care of him. In fact, he's grateful to him. Oh, I'm glad. That's good. See, he's a kind boy. But not his mother. What do you mean? I showed him all the messages. Caden was shocked. What? You showed him? About giving the babies to someone else or cutting ties. Horrible stuff like that. And he didn't even know about the three principles. He was shocked, saying, What era is she from? He said, Our family isn't even that prestigious. What is she talking about? I don't believe you. Let me talk to Caden directly. 
He says he'll never show his face again. He won't even let you see your grandchildren. Then who's going to take over this house? I'm afraid it's over. I won't be able to show my face to my ancestors by letting it end with my generation. Isn't there something even worse? Oh, stop! But you guys, your house now is too small for babies, isn't it? You should come back to my house, right? That's better. It looks like my brother-in-law already got a job. We're going to have a growing family too, so we were thinking of buying a condo. Then I'll be all alone in such a big, useless house in the countryside. Congratulations! You don't have to deal with the hassle of having your family back home and all the noise. I'll be too lonely. It sounds like you are very hard on my sister-in-law. I wouldn't be able to stand it. I've only heard a little about it, but I was horrified. As the eldest son's wife, I had to discipline her strictly. You must be joking. Nowadays, things like washing clothes by hand and hanging them outside are just way out there. Tiffany, are you sure you are not from the 1800s? It's the 60s. That's what they did to me too. So you're going to do the same thing to your son's wife? That's why your family is growing apart. Whether you were born in the 1800s or the 60s, you have to change your values to fit the times. Okay, you're right. So please come back with Caden. That's impossible. Don't say that. Yes, it is. I found out the gender. Which is it? They're both girls. No. See, you're still talking like that. Caden is our only hope. I'm sure Caden will come back, and also to give me an heir. I don't care about heirs or noble families. What's important is that the family can live together happily. It's obvious that my daughters would have a hard time in the house with a person like you. I don't know what kind of outdated education you would give to my daughters. You are young and don't understand anything. This world is a male-dominated society. A woman who hasn't given birth to a man is not accepted. What time period are you talking about? When do you think it is now? It's you who doesn't understand anything. Please don't leave me. Come home, all of you. I'll be waiting for you with a feast. Please don't do that. It'll just be a waste of food. You can forget about the three principles. I won't meddle any more. Just say hi once in a while. All right. It was in the three principles. You said never to disobey your husband. This is my husband's decision. Tell Caden. Tell him I'll be waiting for him. Your mother will always love you, Caden. You'll come back some day with a worthy successor, won't you? I told him. He said there's no point in waiting. He'll never go back to his parents' house again. Don't be so cold. I've learned a lot. I won't become a mother-in-law like you. Don't leave me alone. I'll be too lonely. It's going to be lively over here. Make me a part of it. <music> Tiffany is living alone in the countryside in a house too big for her to live in alone. She has a pension, so she has no trouble making ends meet. I can't imagine how lonely it must be for her not to see her family. I'm sure she personally understands the pressure of being told to provide an heir, so it's sad that she repeated the cycle. If only she had turned that around and become a sensible person, we might have had a different future. My husband was a little shocked, but there are no lies about his memories of his father. But when he saw his mother, he realized that you can't count on blood relatives. I had my hands full taking care of two babies after they were born. To be honest, I don't have time to think about an old woman living in the countryside. I really feel sorry for that she won't get to see such cute grandchildren. But, well, she deserved it. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.